Warning, the Stone Age Gamer includes a lot of bad language. Cover your mother ears. Good evening and welcome to the Stone Age Gamer Podcast. <laughs> I am Chris Randazzo and joining me tonight is extremely loud machine gun fire, Dan Ryan. Oh my god. It's, oh, Chris. Oh, Chris. <laughs> The Alphabet Super Series has returned, and for the letter C, I foolishly chose Contra Legacy of War, a game I truly and honestly wish I had left to my imagination. Will Dan and I's friendship survive me making him play this thing? I hope you weren't planning on aiming at anything, because the Stone Age Gamer Podcast (laughs) starts now. Good luck. I'm strafing, now I'm not. Now I'm strafing, now I'm not. Hi everyone, this is episode 462, it is the week of May 12th, 2023, and the day this podcast goes live is the day that I am sitting on my couch playing Tears of the Kingdom, which is sadly not today. We're recording this a week in advance. I got real confused there for a minute. I was like, what the fuck is happening? How did you not mention that yet? Next Friday. And how did I I miss that? Yeah, next next Friday I'm going to be sitting, I'm, I'm going to try in my best to get as much of my work done as possible ahead of time so that Friday I can just drop the kids at school, go out to Target, get Tears of the Kingdom and my fancy-ass fanny pack, and, <laughs> uh, I don't know, maybe one of the Amiibo if it's sitting there, yeah, we'll see. Uh, and then come home and play it all day until it's time to record the podcast (laughs) (laughs) and then maybe even while we're recording the podcast too that that maybe it'll just be a live stream of your reactions oh shit oh my god can't believe this is fucking happening oh this is a (laughs) goblin son of a bitch you know maybe that will be the case uh but i will say that i'm like i'm weirdly i'm super excited for it obviously because i love the wild and i love zelda games and i'm like completely and totally immersed in zelda games with all the videos i'm making right now but at the same time i am kind of obsessing over advance wars oh uh, so good which is really freaking good it's Uh, so good i'm so happy i I, i'm i've i I said it on discord i've never had more fun at something i'm so bad at (laughs) Uh, because i am that's how i felt about sex the first couple of times (laughs) This is great. It's not going well for either of us, but I think this is awesome. I'm, I'm, a good a, time. I'm sorry. Not sure about anybody else in the room. But. Yeah, no, this was, I mean, this was about eight seconds of joy for me. I don't, <laughs> I'm spent. I'm good 13. Night. What do I know? 14, something like that. Anyway, regardless, <laughs> that's fucking, uh, it's true. Sad, weird. Anyway. Yeah, no, it's man. It's real good. Chris. It's really, really good. As someone um, who is not a, uh, an Advance Wars uh, neo- neophyte, I think it's the right word. I'm so tired. My, I, my, I don't bring. Let's good go with it right now. Just, I'm into it. Um, it as someone who is a veteran of the Advance Wars series. Uh, yeah, look, everything you said about this, like obviously being made with love and attention to detail. And uh, an eye towards the things that made this a unique, enjoyable, engaging, fun experience. Uh, It all true, a hundred percent true. They have absolutely fucking nailed this. I love, I love it pieces. Yeah, I love. um, I can't say how much it's improved over the originals because I never really played them. But I can say that uh, I am having an absolute blast with it. I was really frustrated by the first time you fight the first dude from Green Earth. That was the one oh, that... Eagle? <laughs> yeah. That one killed me. Because I was not at all prepared for him to be able to take two turns in a row. Yeah. Like, so yeah, any, that first time strategy, he drops that CO power, you're like, oh shit! So any strategy I had in place, like he immediately took out my my helicopters, and then he just I fought him to a stalemate, and I've spent like an hour and a half on that battle, just trying to inch forward if I could just get past him, but I couldn't. He couldn't take me down, but I couldn't take him out either. Right, and I eventually gave up. And I complained about it online, and somebody had mentioned to me that failure is a big part of learning this game. Oh, and like, for sure. 
And that's just it, so much of this game goes against my nature when playing games like that. The idea of sacrificing troops and stuff like mm-hmm. that, out, the, throwing things in the way like, all right, well, I'm going to sacrifice this uh, that that can die. Like, I don't that's just not how I naturally play with. I'm going to put plays. this small tank here to draw the rocket fire so that I can move my artillery or my rockets within range to hit them on the next turn. Exactly. Or move my like, my medium tank up to get them, or my helicopter, or whatever, whatever the fuck, you know. Whenever yeah. I strategize something in any sort of game or whatever that requires some sort of strategy, sacrifice is almost never a part of it, unless it's like if I'm War playing an RPG, hell, I'll be like, "Well, this guy can take this guy can take the damage," but like I don't want anyone to lose, and that's right. That's just not the way that I play things, and also like sacrificing an entire war <laughs> like in order yeah. to just start over again it's like it just goes against my nature but i'm learning it and it's really fun being this far outside of my comfort zone and having this much fun because it is a really really fun game to figure out uh and after it's such a I beat good little guy, story like yeah, it, I, I haven't gotten much story so far but i'm it, only but it, a couple you don't need in. to get much more than that you know like <laughs> you don't get yeah, it unfolds over the course of all the battles. Um, mm-hmm. But the way that it's done, it's not a very deep story. You know what I mean? Like, I, there's depth to it, but it's not, you're not reading fucking Tolstoy. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, still not, not entirely sure what the story is. Like, you'll get why, there. Well, I don't know why we're fighting this Olaf dude. And I don't, I, I don't know why this sniper guy who's. Hart clearly isn't into fighting for the definitely uh, not the blue team. Like he's just kind of doing this for some reason. Grit. Uh, I just got the first Andy mission, and uh, I beat that one, and then the one after it, and that's where I'm at right now. Um, so, so now I can good. choose. Wait, no, not Andy. Max. Max. Right? Max, the big yeah. guy. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I can choose between With Andy his and Max, Max Force. Now. Yeah, his Max Force. I liked that a little bit better than Andy's. CO power, which is like, I can heal things. Like, yeah, it's exciting. Except it's like one point or two points. I'm like, well, I, if I'm getting shot, I'm probably still dead. So I it's thanks. Good. There will be times where that makes the difference, though, when you're like, all right, I've got, you know, they've got their whatever, and I've got two, three power units. So if I combine the units, now I've got a six power unit. And Andy's thing is going to give me the two points, and now I'm eight, so on the next turn, I can go take out X, Y, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there, will be, there will be times where that power will come in handy. Um, there is also a reason they added secondary CO powers in sequels, um, because it is a bit underwhelming. It's definitely... Like, if you do the multiplayer stuff or the campaign stuff where you get to just pick other COs and play as them with their CO powers, it is very rare that you will pick Andy. Because right. he's kind of like, just the everyman if boring I can, one. If I can pick the guy who can literally take two uninterrupted turns in a row, I'm picking that guy. Because, holy crap, that is insanely useful. But, but I was very not proud all of myself. his units can do that. Only a couple. It's true, but still, <laughs> it's 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 enough to kick my ass. It is. Uh, I was very proud of myself when I when I solved that one because where I had the stalemate, I had the idea at first of like, okay, I got to blow up this thing. He had a factory up in the corner. I was like, if I can take that factory, then I'm in good shape. So I had to buy. It wasn't it it wasn't like the best strategy in the world because I still wound up with like a C ranking. But I was really proud of it because I yeah. I fought him on the one front, and then I bought two more missiles, uh, the the long range trucks, and yeah. I parked three of them within uh, a shot so that every on one turn I could destroy whatever was there, right? Because he just kept he had basically infinite money, so he just kept pumping right. things out of that factory every turn. But as long as I could take out the two things that were near it, I could fly a dude over and then take over that factory, and that's what I did. And then once that factory was taken, it was just a matter of time. It was like, you can't beat me now. You're going to try, but I will destroy you. And then I did, and it was great. <laughs> what what I've really enjoyed, well, one, um, 
Tiff likes to play it with me. Um, she really likes Advance Wars. When we like first started dating, um, it was one of the things where I was like, "You got to fucking play this with me." And like we were handing the Game Boy Advance back and forth. Um, so you know, like there, there's somewhat of the nostalgia baked into it with that. And I, I loaded up one of the missions or whatever, and she came. It was a fog of war mission, um, and she came back into uh, into the living room. And she like looked at the TV and she was like, "Fuck a war!" Like she was so <laughs> fucking excited, um, which was awesome. But <laughs> yeah, I just finished one of those missions. What? I did not have the same excitement. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love fog of war. What um what is what's been super fun about it is like we'll kind of go back and forth. Like she'll plot the strategy for one map, and then the next map I'll do it or whatever. And the whole time we're playing, like I'm just talking shit relentlessly is where i'm like i don't fuck i wouldn't do that i mean i'm gonna do it because you told me to but i wouldn't do that this isn't an s rank and fuck you (laughs) You like she got so mad like i'm one of the missions she got an a rank um with her moves and she was like yeah okay s rank the next one fucking tough guy and i was like i mean i'm going to and did and she was like i fucking hate you (laughs) It's like, but I've been playing this game for fucking 20 years. You know what I mean? Like, I, I this is my shit. I'm kind of into this. I really like what they've done with the, uh, the way the characters look. Um, I would have oh preferred f- full voice acting, obviously. Um, that yeah, that part. is a little jarring where it's like, they just start saying a lot. It's, it's more than like the grunt and then... Yeah, you know, it's like they're saying like yeah, and then a, t- a paragraph comes out. They'll say like the first five words. Yeah, like it, it's, it's weird. Like, it's a weird just, way to cut it off. Just go a little further. You can you can do it. You can afford it. Yeah. You're, all you're or Nintendo. nothing. All or Come nothing. On. Get get in there. But um, the voice actors are good. They're, they they they're read good. enough of the lines to prove that they're perfectly capable. Yeah, yeah. But like I I really like the way the characters look and they're the big animations with the CO powers and whatnot. I love um, this this cell shading, whatever they're doing there with these characters. They look gorgeous. Yeah, it looks Way really forward good. Has definitely uh, stepped their game up. Yeah, they're okay. They're okay. We uh we should definitely have them on the show at some oh, point. Oh yeah, I'm sure they'd love to talk to us. I'm sure. How the fuck? Why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they love to talk to us? We're the best, it's and true. we love all of their games. That's also true. Well, that's be like, hey, true. would you? Would you enjoy a verbal blowjob for a little bit? Like, yes, as a matter of fact, I would. I did not love spider sores. I really wanted to, but oh, I did not. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, the game was okay. I feel like it could have been a heck of a lot better. Yeah, that's fair. But All right, well, way forward, if you're listening, don't listen to that part. <laughs> Skip we'll it. talk about Skip all the games by you that we do love, which is a lot. <laughs> which is most, to be fair. It's, yeah. They've got way more hits than misses. Oh, for sure. Yeah, this is um, this is outstanding. I said it to Tiff the other day. I was like, "This is, I mean, this might be my game of the year." And she was like, "It's only May, and we haven't played Star Wars yet." I said, "No, I, I know. <laughs> I am, I am fully aware of what we haven't played yet." But <laughs> my God, this is good. Yeah, it's it's wonderful. I'm really glad that I uh, I made the decision to go for it, and and I stuck stuck with it, and I'm really happy with it. I'm just concerned that when Tears of the Kingdom comes out, I'm gonna take a break from Advance Wars, oh, sure. and then come back to it and be like, fuck, I don't remember anything. Thankfully, you're still early enough in the game to where like, there's still plenty more to learn to where the rest of it will kind of click into place as you're learning the other stuff. I mean, like, I'm gonna done... play the heck of it this week. You know, I got a week left. Yeah, you'll get like, have you done any of the submarine missions yet, or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, just did a just did okay. a submarine mission. Just yeah, learned so about like, boats and submarines. You're getting that. You'll get like some bigger tanks and shit. Like, I, the basics are are pretty much there. Word. Yeah, yeah it's really. Good. I, I'm not that concerned. I was hoping. I was really hoping that I would get this game and be able to finish the first game before Tears of the Kingdom. That was my hope. Um. And then, like, you know, eventually I'll play Advance Wars 2, because I, if, I, if I liked the game, then I would move right. on to the sequels. Um, and uh, I just don't, I don't see myself finishing this game in a week. Not with the, Probably not with my not. workload. 
there's there's quite a bit of game there. Yeah, it it does. There, I was scrolling around on the map, and like, I, yeah, I'm I'm not anywhere near the end of this game. No, but I mean, maybe I'll I'll sprinkle in some Advance Wars after Tears of the Kingdom comes out. Like, I'm not in a rush to finish Tears of the Kingdom. I don't have to review it or anything. So sure, I don't have to review uh, Advance Wars either. So the only thing I do have to review right now is uh uh Shadows Over Loathing, which I have occasionally smattered into my uh my gameplay time and is still wonderful <laughs> yeah i really, really i really want to check that out too i really want to check that out great it is fun it's funny um oh and speaking of things that i get to write about i get to do the preview of the new double dragon game did you see that thing oh that looks really really awesome oh it looks great i'm very excited about it i hate really? it really <laughs> I'm excited about that. I'm excited about the Toxic Crusaders game. Yeah, like, what a time to be a beat 'em up fan, huh? I, th- and that's kind of the weird thing. I was just going to say, like, beat 'em ups are kind of the eternal genre that never go away. Like, oh, there's but they're definitely experiencing a renaissance now. Like, oh sure, but like, there's, um, th- there's like, there's just a ton of good beat 'em ups that come out every year. Big name ones like we've had Streets of Rage recently and Turtles, and now with Double Dragon and Toxic Crusaders, um, that our buddy uh Stevie is working on mm-hmm. from uh Ninja Baseball Spirits. Like he's doing a bunch of the art for that. Um like there's definitely some bigger name ones coming out, but there's been quality beat 'em ups every year for a while. It's pretty pretty nice time to be alive. It is. Uh, I think that's actually uh, almost everything I had besides talking about how angry I am at Minecraft. <laughs> what's, what's, what's got your goat with Minecraft? It's such a poorly made game. <laughs> like, they just keep adding new stuff to it. Like, oh, we're going to add these new features and this new thing, but they're never adding stability. Like, no. just get the, could somebody please make the bones of this game fucking function but do they function on pc is that like is that a thing where it's the console version is is broken to a point where it doesn't really work as well as the pc i don't know i don't think it matters i've only ever played the console Uh, yeah i've only ever played the console version too but again i don't think it matters you released the console version and it sold 14 oh, quadrillion dr- quadrillion copies across every platform. Like, great, if your PC w- version works fine, then good for you. But this, this exists. Minecraft on the Switch is obscenely popular, and it's cross-play. But, like, I-, I even tried loading it on the Xbox One, and it didn't change a damn thing. It ran just as crappy. And, like, even menu navigation. Like, all right, John... Uh, to reward him for uh, performing in the band concert for school, which was Chef Kiss. Like, we went yeah. to that last night. It was That's awesome. exactly what you imagine a bunch of grade schoolers playing the Star Wars theme would sound uh, like. <laughs> it, it was very honky, but it was very great. <laughs> uh, very much enjoyed it. I had a great moment, too. The, uh, the, the jazz band performed first, Ooh. and they did the... Um, oh, crap. Now I can't remember the name of the... Uh, uh, Ron Ron Burgundy graced us by playing some jazz flute. Hold on, uh, it's the Peter Gunn theme, uh, right? Oh yeah, the Peter Gunn theme, and uh, the guy, the the conductor, the 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 music teacher said, "So we're gonna play the uh, the, the Peter Gunn theme. It's very you know, spy related. It was uh, I was in some video game when I was a kid, and they sat there for a second, and I look around the audience. I'm like, really." It's Spy Nobody? Hunter! And he's like, yeah, it was Spy Hunter. <laughs> so that was you got, fun. You got to imagine other people knew <laughs> they just didn't want to be the one to yell it out. I was more than happy to be that guy. I, I am always that guy. Fucking motherfucking Spy Hunter! <laughs> right? So anyway, John plays in the concert, and his reward was there was a, a new uh, mod for Minecraft that he has been just dying to get. Sure. And so that was his reward for doing that. Like you, you, if you perform in this show, we will get you that mod. So you perform the show, 
I want to go get in the mod. Uh, you don't, your system doesn't have enough memory for this mod. Fuck. Okay. What exactly does that mean? So do I not I have a, to, enough free space for this mod or can I just not? Exactly. I don't know what that means because there's no more information than that. It says how much space the mod requires, but I don't know how much space I have. So I go to my system settings, like, all right, let's just on a lark. No, I have over 10 gigs still available on my system. So <laughs> this that's better not, not the be a 20 gig mod. It's 512 megs. Oh, Jesus. It's, it's not even one gig. So it's not my system memory that's the problem, but it says your system doesn't have enough memory. Okay. So we go into start deleting some of the worlds that he's made, right? Right. This thing takes 150, I think 154 was the number that we were looking for. He deleted a 170 something uh, world that he built. Yeah. We still didn't have enough room. Because you got to have double. I don't know. Nothing tells you how much room you have. I can't look at any menu in <laughs> Minecraft and it will tell me you have this. You need this. It just says you need this. Good luck. <laughs> what figure kind it out, of, asshole? What kind of dumb shit is that? What kind of Nintendo ass shit is that? This is <laughs> Minecraft. That's the kind of bullshit Nintendo used to pull. And not even they do that anymore. That is so unintuitive. It is incredibly obnoxious. And that's not even to take into consideration that half the things on the on the store just the game just crashes. Half the mornings John that's will wake up wild. and just won't be able to play Minecraft because it just doesn't work today. That's and like fucking crazy. This is one of the biggest entertainment properties on the fucking planet. If this was some sort of small time indie thing, I sure. would understand that blew up and got all big and they never really got to catch up. But this is fucking Minecraft. This is a multi-billion dollar thing. Invest in some infrastructure, you fools. Make it work because he would spend more time and more money on it if it fucking functioned. Was it, it like that under M Mojang themselves? Do you I know? don't know. We haven't. I we haven't been into Minecraft that long. It's only been what, right. like a year or so here, where he where John finally started catching on to Minecraft. But like, I don't know. I feel like time has no meaning anymore. They, <laughs> it's, they'll it's, drop it an could update. Have been seven be like, years. It could have been. Who knows? <laughs> That's, we're, we're in our fifties like, now. <laughs> are we? I, we might be. I don't fucking know. <laughs> I I'm I'm just I'm I'm fucking living with this game because John puts all this work into it and the whole time you're playing it just feels like it's held together with like copper wire and spit like yeah the whole thing looks like it's going to fall apart at any moment and I'm looking at it like you made this game look like shit so that it could run brilliantly that was the point on you're gonna anything give, right you're going to give them the freedom to do all kinds of stuff so you make the game look all blocky and ridiculous so that yeah. you don't have to spend all this processing power on, on on textures and everything. But it still runs like garbage. Like, sometimes it runs okay, and then, like, three things show up on screen, and it slows down to, like, a 10 frames per second. I'm like, I understand the Switch is the Switch, but you can do better than this. I've seen you. <laughs> I've seen you do it. It's I weird have too. seen games do better. Because, like, I, it was not... I don't remember having that experience playing it on the PS3, I think. Might have been the 4. But I, do, I don't remember having, like, slowdown and game crashes and all of those things playing it on the PS3. Well, that makes sense to me because it was so much smaller back then. Yeah, I, suppose I mean, like that's as fair. a as a like, I mean, not yeah. like the popularity. I mean, the game itself. They just keep adding, and they don't seem to be taking into consideration what that's going to do to the rest of the game. Because there was an update, what, like a couple months ago, they pushed this update to the Switch that just stopped the game from working <laughs> for some people, <laughs> not for everybody, just for some people, and like enough people that you could jump online and be like, I just my kid just uploaded updated to this. Uh, and now he can't play, like, the game won't even start. And there'd be, like, a whole forums full of people be like, 
well, mine starts, mine doesn't, mine doesn't, mine does. Like, just half the people That's playing wild, on man. any particular platform, it just doesn't fucking work anymore. Like, That's wild. Are you, are you serious with it? It's fucking Minecraft. Get your shit together, please. So it, it, it's time for a sequel? No. Like, it re- there really should just be a Minecraft <laughs> 2 at this point? I mean, yeah, that would be that would be lovely, but I mean, I think that's kind of what this is, isn't it? We're playing Bedrock Edition, which was the thing that they rebuilt after. Like, this is the rebuilt version of it, right? So, yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. It's it's weird. You are correct in that you would think, with you know all the money in the world, you'd be able to provide a stable experience for your users. But at the same time, uh, if the game continuously runs like shit and everybody still plays it, where is the incentive yeah. <laughs> for them to do better? <laughs> exactly. Clearly, you know, they and, don't have to do better. I would just really like that's that. unfortunate. You, it's you know, as as my grandmother would say, though, don't don't hold your breath with your hand on your ass, or you're die in a funny position. <laughs> it's, it's you know altruism doesn't really exist in the video game space anymore I don't think I don't know that it doesn't but no but I mean like I, we just watched the whole Fall Guys video of like all the neat new stuff they're adding to Fall Guys sure and they clearly put a ton of thought into what they were doing and like that's great. I'm excited. John fucking loves Fall Guys. And he sure. plays it all the time. And then they're adding a new uh, a level editor to Fall Guys, so you can make your own courses and then upload them. And they'll be selecting like the, they'll be curating the best of the best to put into like regular rotation for people to play. Like that's cool. The whole thing is is really fucking cool. Uh, that that's great. And that's that's Fall Guys. That's a fucking yeah. fraction of Minecraft popularity. Now, granted, it's a less complex game. Sure. But at the same I, time... I'm still, I, I am still just flabbergasted at the continued popularity of Minecraft. I, I don't like it very much, but I understand why John likes it so much. So, you know, I guess I get it. I don't, I don't know that I do anymore. I just because even with all the new shit that they add, it's still just that particular thing. That's a pretty good thing. Yeah, it's just you know, build whatever you want and make monsters. Void. Th- I don't know. I don't get it. I don't. I don't I, get I, it. I, I really don't. Like <laughs> I, I, I don't. I, I don't see the draw myself. I look at it and be like, this does not look like fun to me. However, you are clearly having a lot of fun. And he will not shut up about it yeah. ever. It is I, I saw just the first thought that pops into his mind. He walk right out of his bedroom, and be like, "I was watching somebody who was playing Minecraft on YouTube, and he found this one rare mob. And then I think that I'm going to build a rare mob zoo. And then he talked about building a rare mob zoo all week long, and then he got really frustrated because he couldn't get the blue axolotl uh, because oh, the blue wow. axolotl he knows the spawn rate is like one out of every like one thousand three hundred and forty one axolotls that you create. One of them will be a blue axolotl." axolotl so i just keep spawning axolotls but now the the screen's full of them my game's gonna crash because there's too many axolotls on screen which isn't that a fucking problem you shouldn't be able to make so many of something that makes the game crash but (laughs) you can apparently enter codes to get these things so he looked online to find the code to get the blue axolotl and he entered the code and the code doesn't work and that's because minecraft pushed an update that fucked up all the codes for some reason on the switch version so we looked down to the youtube comments and we found somebody who figured out how to fix the codes for the the switch version so we finally fixed the code and he got the blue axolotl and he did some silly things with it but like and it was his whole week was just drop him off at school as he's walking to the door he is talking about minecraft non-stop stream of consciousness minecraft 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 then he goes to school and as soon as i pick him up from school he runs up he gives me a hug how you doing buddy minecraft 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 like yeah, wow it's wild man. it's non-stop it's nothing but minecraft that's wild it is wild kids love Not it good for him yeah they do yeah. they do i don't get it i don't i don't understand 
the continued popularity of it, but eh, that's fine. I don't have to understand everything, Chris. That's true. I don't I don't understand most things. I, <laughs> I get by just fine. <laughs> I get by enough. Uh, I have one more thing, which is to talk comment on the fact that Atari bought a bunch of M network stuff. Atari's doing a shopping spree, man. They are. They're well, buying some weird about stuff. I, I get I get what they're going for. I understand the, the goal here is to uh build a uh, your your catalog to kind of get yourself in a position uh to do more exciting things in the game industry as it were in in the space in the space i'm uh <sighs> i like long? that they bought these m network ones because yeah. like that's in television <laughs> guess mm-hmm. who's not making a game console anytime soon in television so i, I was uh, just going to ask how long do you think it's going to be before they purchase in television oh boy that would be lovely well because i do think that seems to be kind of reading the tea leaves right of the things that they are acquiring these sort of forgotten and or troubled brands and television seems to be right up their alley of what they're looking for and then i just don't know that it's worth it to them well but there are some properties there that would be worth it uh, on name recognition, right? Like taking some of the games that were theoretically in development for the Amico. Well, and that's, yeah, that's them- not buying in television. That's that's see the problem with buying in television is that at this point in television is mired in so much debt and potential legal troubles. Sure, you would have to be insane to buy that company. But yeah, if you want to give them some money to buy a handful of M Network titles. Yeah, there, there you go. Uh, because one of those titles was my favorite M Network title was a- Astro Blast. So yeah, now Atari has Astro Blast, so they could make Astro Blast Recharged, and I would buy the th- the heck out of it because I do still on a weekly basis, on weekend mornings, come downstairs and play a level of Yars Recharged and a couple of levels of a uh, uh, Caverns of Mars Recharged. I I still yeah. have my VCS. I still use it pretty regularly. And uh, those recharge games are fucking great. Yeah, I still got to pick up that uh, Atari 50 thing at some point. Yeah, that's wonderful. And that, am, that, gets, that has all of my love. I'm but, you know, that, that came out, point. and then they, then they bought Berserk, and it's like, wow, it would have been really fucking cool to have Berserk on Atari 50. Right. Uh, I'm so glad that they have that. I can't wait to see what they do with it, because, like... Maybe they'll the be an Atari 51! Yeah. Oh. Atari 51. <laughs> Count me the fuck in. That'd be great. The other games. <laughs> the shit we forgot. Sorry, guys. Here's the shit we couldn't afford last time, but we can now. It's just a Bubsy collection. <laughs> <laughs> you know... Oh, man. We're going to talk about Bubsy later. I feel, I feel like that. there's a natural connection to the game you made us play <laughs> it's there now i think looking forward is. to that well that's everything that i have besides a uh, trash man's xbox 360 list which we'll read that right before the break what have you been up to oh man um a lot of a uh, lot of advance wars this week um the uh marvel snap season reset on monday uh at 11 i hate fucking this shit is so stupid puzzle and dragon started doing this too it used to be that they would reset in the morning. So, like, the first of the month, uh, that morning, like, either 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock, depending on, you know, where we were in the uh, stupid daylight savings time bullshit that we still do, um, the the new thing would start. The new month, the new collab, the new whatever. Puzzle and Dragons started going to, like, 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night on the first day of the month or the the Monday of the things starting. And it's like, well, but, but there was a whole day that I could, I could have woken up and like been excited about it. But now I woke up and I was just pissed that it started later. Marvel snap does the same thing when uh, on May 1st, when the season started, uh, it was 11 o'clock at night is when the season kicked over on May 1st. It was like, well, it's already fucking May 2nd. You assholes. God damn not being on the West Coast. Anyway, 
There's a new season pass card. Uh, it's Nebula. She's really cool and interesting and a really well-balanced card. And what what Marvel Snap does, I think I talked about it last month, where once you hit infinite, um, you can't drop rank anymore. So you get up to level 100, which is infinite, and then that's where you stay for the rest of the season. And then when the season resets, they kick you down 30 levels so that you have to work back up to it. Um, and this season is starting off very similarly to how last season started for me, where I started at level 70 because I was infinite, I dropped my 30 levels, and then I got up to like 72, and then I spent the rest of the week playing, and now I'm uh, down to 68. Because <laughs> everybody's gotten better with the newer shit, and I haven't figured out quite what works yet, because I haven't gotten to play as much. Um, but I did buy Galactus, who is uh, one of the most easily predictable cards in the game, but is just kind of really fun to play because when you play Galactus down he destroys the other two locations there's cool animation kneel before Galactus and he fucking blows up the other two things but like it's super easy to see coming and it it's it's not super fun to play against because you either have a counter for it or you lose is kind of the way it goes there's not a ton of strategy playing against Galactus you're not really predicting your opponent's hand it's you put down wolverine on turn two you put down waver electro on turn three and then galactus is coming i know galactus is, you know galactus is coming everybody fucking knows that this is a galactus deck, right so it really does become a matter of by the time galactus destroys these other two locations do i have enough to win if i don't i retreat it kind of makes the game linear and and a little boring in a certain respect but it is super fun to play um i'm now trying to figure out how to make nebula work though and it just hasn't gone uh super well so far i did also finally get i mean i say finally they've only been out for like two weeks there was a bunch of uh new stuff released in puzzle and dragons and there was one card so, uh, about a, two years ago, maybe more, maybe three years ago, they started releasing these really strong transforming robot cards. They are really awesome, and it was like, oh, the, the Nautilus is the green submarine, and he's really good, and Royal Oak is the blue submarine, and he's not as good. Um, and then, like, some other ones came out, and there's a race car and a plane, and it was like, oh, that's fucking fun. And then, a couple months ago in Japan, they released... Uh, combinations of those transforming robot cards so it's royal oak and nautilus and seawolf and daytona and seawolf and daytona is just it's just better like just flat out it is a better card to get uh it makes team building a lot easier it's just much more flexible in regards to the dungeons that it can tackle with cards that we have in north america versus cards that only came out in japan whatever when they released the cards, they gave you a free roll, and you had a 50-50 shot, and you either get Seawolf and Daytona, or you get Royal Oak and Nautilus. And so you either get happy, or you get less happy. And I, when I got the free roll, I was less happy. I was <laughs> like, oh man, that sucks. And I rolled a whole bunch of stones to get them, uh, to try and get Seawolf and Daytona, didn't get them, and then two weeks later, I, they popped up in another Godfest, and I was like, well, let me fucking give it a shot. One roll, Seawolf and Daytona. Fucking sweet. All right. So I can jump back into this. So I still haven't picked up the show. It's been Advance Wars, Snap, and Puzzle and Dragons, because apparently I'm just the most boring gamer ever, is kind of what I've figured out in, in my old age, Chris. I play a couple of games all the time, and I'm just an old man about it. <laughs> That's where we're at. Yeah. I do really want to pick up the new Star Wars game. I'm going to get the show too. probably next week. Um, I, I see, there's some ridiculous discourse going on about that game on Twitter today where, like, some uh, some streamer was streaming the game and, like, the it was during the opening training sequence and uh -huh. so the stormtroopers were, like, shooting at her while she was uh, climbing across uh, uh, something and the stormtroopers weren't hitting her. And she stopped moving and realized that. And so she just, like, said, I'm gonna go, uh, 
I gotta go get a drink. And she like just put the controller down and the stormtroopers <laughs> kept shooting and not hitting her. And I thought it was fucking hilarious. But of course the discourse turned into like, yeah, that's a great game design there. What a shitty game. And then, wow. and then of course it turned into, uh, it's not a shitty game. It's that if she's a girl. And so she's clearly playing it on like easy mode. It's still, oh, fuck you. I God, play on easy mode. God damn. Fucking when I guns. play that game, I'm going to play it on story mode. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Because I don't give a shit. I got nothing to prove. What? A, uh, Turns man. out she was playing it on the hardest difficulty. It's just... Of course she just, was. That's just part of the fucking training thing. They're teaching you how to do the things in the game. You don't want them to be able to shoot you and kill you instantly. Like, No! That is that is actual good game design. Go Go, go jump off a cliff. How dare you? Oh, I, man, people are real fucking weird about shit. Yeah. I don't get game it. It looks fun. I, I, I would like to play that it. Ga- I wouldn't like to play great. it enough to buy a whole new system for. I don't know. Right, that didn't it, come out it, on PS4. It does look like a game that you get a new system for. Yeah, but I'm not. Uh, what else am I going to get for that new system? I'm not spending five hundred and eighty dollars to play a Star Wars game. I'm just know. fucking not. <laughs> I don't know. It looks real good. It looks <laughs> it, real good. It, it looks neat, but until there's until there's enough stuff that I want to play on a next generation console, I I can't justify getting a next gen console. I've decided I'm probably not going to play the Resident Evil Four remake. I appreciated the demo, but it didn't really strike me as something that I want to... I'm going to dedicate the time to play through. It's just, unfortunately, yeah. not. It has turned into something that is not for me. Um, I played the Street Fighter Six demo, and, again, I really appreciate it, and I really want to watch people who are good at that game play it, but, like soccer, it's not for me. <laughs> I'm... I would love. Like I love soccer. watching soccer. I'm not going to go play soccer. It's just not going to happen. Not anymore. Too old. No, um, way too old for that shit. My knees don't work. So that was like two of the three things. I was thinking, all right, if I can get up to like five solid games that I really want to play on a next gen console, I will seriously consider getting a next gen console. And like now we're down to just Jedi Fallen Order. I uh, sorry, Jedi Survivor. And I only decently liked Fallen Order. So like. At some point, they'll do something that's going to convince me to buy a next generation console. That oh, isn't definitely. Whatever Nintendo does next, but it's not there yet, and it's kind of a bummer. Yeah, they definitely will. Fingers crossed. All right, know. I'll let you know uh, how it is. I'm going to get it. I'll get it eventually. It's to to canonical Star Wars story. I'll I'll play it someday. Just join the PC Master Race. I mean, that is Anyways. also an option. <laughs> also an option. All right, well, before we go on break, uh, Trashman sent us an Xbox 360 starter kit that I didn't read because I didn't know it was here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there was a whole separate thread uh, just just for his that I didn't notice uh, because I'm bad at Discord. So, you really are. We've all been saying it behind your back. We have a separate Discord where we talk about, about how bad you are bad at Discord. At Discord, yeah. It's really interesting. All right, let's see. He's got Earth Defense Force. In 2013, radio waves are detected from deep space, indicating deep another race space. of intelligent beings. A unified multinational organization, EDF, is formed in case the aliens prove to be hostile. Four years after detecting the radio waves, hundreds of UFOs appear over major cities, dropping giant acid spitting ants onto the populace <sighs> below. Your mission the worst kind the of invaders. ants. Yeah, the- at least top five worst kind of ants. <laughs> <laughs> Remember those ants in uh, Indiana Jones, uh, the, the King of the Crystal Skull? Remember those ants? Yeah, not great. Yeah. No, it's, ooh, not yeah. great ants. <laughs> Ridiculous game with lots of weapons to choose from. You can blow up just about anything. Absolute bonkers with friends. Ooh, okay. Tales of Vesperia. Literally the least expensive way to get into the Tale series, and it's one of the best games in the franchise. For six bucks, you gotta try it. I never tried that one because I was told there were no Vespas in it, and that was a huge disappointment to me. Hmm. Viva Piñata, Trouble in Paradise. This is rare doing wacky things. Attract Piñata to your property, and keep them from getting murdered, I mean popped, by some asshole guy. (laughs) 
<laughs> Trouble in Paradise is technically a sequel, but feels more like the first game with a lot of extra content. Bayonetta, from vicious high heels made out of magic guns. A plus recommend. Yeah, Bayonetta is a great game. Enslaved Odyssey to the West. I like that. I've heard this game is cool too. You wake up inside a containment cell aboard a ship. In your attempt to escape, you cause the ship to crash. When you regain consciousness, the only other survivor from the ship has placed a slave band on your head, which essentially links their life with your own. Oh, this is some, uh, uh, what's that? What's that? Pacific Rim shit right here. All right. Mm -hmm. Excellent game from Ninja Theory that flew under the radar for most. Dance Central 3, the most polished game in the series with the best music. Even if you have no rhythm and can't dance, you need to try it out. Okay. I had Dance Central 1 on mine because I didn't know the difference between all three of them. But 8 bucks, it's a pretty solid play. Yeah. Uh, Dragon Age Origins. Dragon Age. It's Dragon Age. Third person <laughs> RPG with really good dialogue and awesome companions. Dragon <clears throat> Age? Uh, what? Dragon Age? Dragon Age. Dragon Age Origins. Mumminums. <laughs> Combat can be a bit slow, but overall, it's a stellar effort from Bior. <laughs> Jawalris. <laughs> uh, now I'm just not thinking about the, the guy uh, saying things incorrectly. Anyway, South Park, the stick of truth. <laughs> this is bar none the best episode of, the, of South Park. We're both real tired. Yeah, this is only going to get worse. I'm looking at how much more he has written here. I'm like, all right, I'm going to get through this, and then we're going to talk some Contra. We're going to do this. We're going to make it tonight. Uh, with, uh, tons of Easter eggs for fans of the series. A little too easy. Recommend everyone play it on the most difficult setting. Vanquish, directed by good old Shinji Mikami of Resident Evil fame. This game is like Gears of War and Devil May Cry had a baby together. Then gave it steroids. They're terrible parents. Very fast-paced action, which leads to a constant, intense focus when playing, but also has moments of frustration which can kill your flow. Got overshadowed by Bayonetta and never saw a sequel, sadly. Darksiders. Angels and demons fight on Earth in the apocalypse. You show up as one of the four horsemen. Chaos ensues. I wanted to like that game so much more than I did. Some people did, though. That, that I game's know. got its fans. I really didn't, wanted to like grab it, though. me, either. Uh, and finally, for $32, Splatterhouse. I had to sacrifice a ton to Oof. get this on here. Splatterhouse for the 360 in of itself is not a stellar game. It may not even be a good game. It feels like someone tried to steal the formula from other popular titles of the time and add new paint, then fell a bit short. But this is the only way I know how to play the original arcade game within the confines mm -hmm. of a SAG starter kit. Huh. The original was an important stepping stone pushing strangeness and gore into the horror video game genre. It doesn't have the notoriety of being first like Haunted House or the impact Sweet Home had, but it was definitely still a polished entry. In addition, you get Splatterhouse 2 and 3, which are stupid expensive on the Genesis. 2 yeah. is arguably a better but much more difficult game than the original. However, Splatterhouse 3 is the magnum opus of the series and worth anyone's time. Total, 99 bucks. Yeah, it's a hard list to argue against. I like good, solid reasons behind uh, all of it mentioned uh guardian heroes remastered is you know uh, i think they're xbox live arcade ones uh castle crashers lost odyssey and near uh okay good good solid list good solid list. yeah i mean you put well, uh done. you put splatterhouse on a list and I'm, I'm i'm pretty much in yeah that sounds like you yeah <laughs> well on that note we're gonna take ourselves a break we're gonna read some commercials and then we're going to talk about Contra Legacy of War, because I'm an asshole. Uh, you're, li <laughs> you're listening to Stone Age Gamer Podcast from Geekade.com. Please stick around. Please. Hi, everyone. Chris here. Podcast listening is free, but podcast creation is not. That's why the Geekade Patreon exists. In an effort to help us pay the bills, we've got a Patreon page set up where you can gain access to our monthly podcast topic schedule, get early access to many of our shows, and more. If you'd like to help support Geekade and keep these shows running week after week, head over to the Geekade Patreon page, linked in the show notes of this very podcast. And now, here's a quick look at some of the other original content, available now from our partners and Geekade.com. First up, what exactly is a Xenogear? 
or Xenogear? I'm not even uh. sure how you say it. I'm sure you'd know the answer to the question, though, if you'd ever played the PlayStation Classic Xenogear. You'd probably know that the game has a pretty fantastic soundtrack. Well, Matt and Chris now know that, thanks to their listener request episode of the Waveback Music Podcast that you can listen to now with your ear holes. Uh, they're on the side of your face, uh, not below it. Get your mind out of the gutter, kid. So if you want to hear some excellent RPG music, and honestly, why wouldn't you? Make sure to tune in to Waveback episode 162, Xenogears. Do you say Xenogears or Xenogears? I say Xenogears. I always have two. I don't know if we're right. I don't think we are, because it's xenophobia. I don't say you're xenophobic, right? I always said xenophobic. Do you? Oh, maybe I do say xenophobic. Now that I'm saying it out loud. Xenomorphs? Don't say xenomorphs. That's true. Xenogears. Xenogears it is. Yeah. But it's Xenoblade. That's how everybody says... But doesn't everybody say Xenoblade Chronicles or whatever? Maybe they do. Instead of Xenoblade Chronicles? Anyway, I don't fucking know. Your mother. (laughs) <laughs> is a wonderful woman for bringing me fucking <laughs> Mega Man records. You're right. I heard the thing. I heard the fucking thing at the end. I was like, what is that squeak? Why yeah, is there a squeaky squeak? It just gets all kind of just gets all kind of fuzzy. A couple of my a couple of my video game records do that. I was listening to my Double Dragon record earlier today and it gets, you know, the closer it gets to the center. Yeah, I don't know. Weird. Yeah. Whatever. Weird. It's fucking Still dope. Worth it. I love it. Yeah. I love looking at it. Gorgeous, isn't it? Oh, it's so good. So good. Came home. Next, our Legend of Zelda retrospective series continues this week with the welcoming of 16-bit technology. How did Zelda handle the transition to the next generation? Plus, following his warm-up on both the Game & Watch and Game Watch, two different things, Link (laughs) learns to play with power, portable power, and finds himself at home on a system that has nothing to do with Nintendo. Don't miss Stone Age Gamer Archaeology, The Legend of Zelda Part 2, playing with superpower. Available now on the Stone Age Gamer YouTube channel. For all of this and more from us and our partner, be sure to keep your eyes on geekade.com. Alright, everybody, we are back, and it is time for the Oof. Super Series, the Alphabet Super Series, where we are month by month choosing a different game for each letter of the alphabet. It's fun when it's fun, uh, and for the letter C, <laughs> I decided to uh, I decided to pick uh, a game that I had always heard was pretty bad, but really, I had never actually played it myself, so I wanted to yeah. find out for myself. I wanted to get my hands dirty. Want, wanted to, get wanted to fuck around and find out. Exactly. So we played Contra Legacy of War. Uh, this game was released on PlayStation in November 1996 and then was somehow ported to Saturn instead of flat out, flat out canceled in May yeah, of 1997. I, why? They decide, why? They played this and they said, you know what? No. Follow it up. We're going to port do, this to the less successful system. Do it again. System. <laughs> we're, we're, <laughs> to the less good. successful system. We're not going to make it any better at all. They certainly made it a little different, which I, I, don't, I found the differences interesting. We'll get there. It was developed by Appaloosa Interactive, the folks behind the MS-DOS port of the Simpsons arcade game, Three Dirty Dwarves, and clearly the reason Dan loves this game, Echo the Dolphin. I... I, I hate them. I kind of hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know I, that this was from the Echo the Dolphin team when I chose it, but wow. So that just makes so much sense. Having played through some of I usually pride myself on finishing these games that I we was pick gonna for say, whatever. I hope you didn't spend the time trying to finish this thing. I I did not. I got up, I think, to the second brown jungly level and went, I'm fucking done. I'm out. I don't You've seen can't. all there is to see. I in the first that that might be the most disappointing thing about this. Like Contra is nothing if not visually interesting throughout 
the experience, right? Well, there are some pretty visually interesting bosses. I watched a YouTube I've, video of the rest of the dude, game. Visually interesting. Uh, okay. There's some really cool shit in a lot of the Contras. There is a lot of brown, average-looking shit in this game. And what I found so, so fucking awful about this is that in the first 30 seconds of Legacy of War, you have experienced the depth and breadth of gameplay that it has to offer. Yeah, yeah, pretty much it. it They're not going to throw anything interesting and new at you going forward. No, they are, and it's not going to be any good because I it's going to be interesting and new. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. The, there's like some weird boat levels. It right? This, yeah, there was the I, boat levels. I hate this game more than any other game you've ever made us play. I <clears> hate <throat> this more than Echo the Dolphin. Oh yeah, this is uh this is all right. At very first glance, when you first start playing it, it has a pretty good frame rate on both PlayStation and Saturn. So I will give it that. It moves along. <laughs> that is nice. the first not at all where you want a review to start. <laughs> the first it one hasn't. or two seconds of actual gameplay is like, okay, I see what you did here. And then it all just goes downhill from there. But you know, the, the, uh, I played the Saturn version first, then I played the, the PlayStation version. I made it through, like, I think two levels before I was like... I have... When looking back on my life, I don't, <laughs> want, I don't want to think to myself that I spent any more time playing this game than I absolutely had to. <laughs> so... I, I did the opposite. I played the PlayStation version and then thought to myself, well, the Saturn version has got to be better. So I spent time figuring out how to configure and get a Saturn emulator to work on my computer. And then after playing through about the first 30 seconds on the Saturn version and going, nope, it's the same shit, I decided to download a bunch of Saturn games <laughs> instead that I would then enjoy at another time because I already had to put in the fucking work to, to get the goddamn emulator up and running. It's got some interesting changes. Um, the Saturn version, like the character select screen was bigger, right? So like the animation okay. that you saw of the characters, right? It was like full screen, whereas the PlayStation one was a lot smaller. But the PlayStation one had more information on it. Like the PlayStation was like, this character has these weapons. The Saturn one sure. was like, pick this dude or this <laughs> monkey or whatever that was, or this robot. <laughs> like okay, this looks really neat, but I didn't even realize the different characters had different weapons till I switched to the PlayStation version, and it said that on the character select screen. Yeah. Um, the map screen is I animated that. on the, uh, the PlayStation 1. Obviously, yeah. you know, the, 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 what's it, the, um, the FMV sequence in the beginning is a lot less grainy on PlayStation because mm -hmm. that's just how PlayStation was versus Saturn and handled FMV way better. Um, but the, uh, the, the, the map screen had like the drew the line, whereas it was just a static image on Saturn, uh, the, throughout the, the PlayStation game has transparency effects going on, which is, uh, another thing the Saturn couldn't really do. Like if you ever seen video of the Saturn version of symphony of the night, it like just, yeah, the, the transparency effects just aren't there. They're, they're done with tricks, uh, but they don't look nearly as good. And the PlayStation one had a bunch of neat transparency effects going on in this one. Though the Saturn game's jumping felt a little bit tighter. Like, on the PlayStation 1, I felt like the jump was after you let go of the button. Whereas yeah. on the Saturn version, I felt like the jump was when you pressed the button. And I definitely liked that a lot better, considering that you have to jump to aim at anything that's above the ground, because you can't aim in this game. What a fucking piece of shit game this is. And I believe I wrote, because the first stage, the music is a song from Contra 3, and I wrote down... You keep Contra 3's music out of your goddamn mouth. <laughs> How dare you? I, this I game, watched a YouTube video, and apparently there are some cool versions of, like, Gyrus and some tank maze game hidden in, like, yeah, the third level. There is. There's, like, an arcade thing. that, And honestly, those two games... hide good games in your shitty game? Don't hide are, good are games in your shitty game. way better than yeah. anything in, in Legacy of War. This do is... That the fucking biggest piece of shit game that we've ever played in the history of our show. I'm including all of the Bubsy games. You this can see what they sucked. were going for. Like this was 
when I look at Contra Rogue Core and I look at that game and it's like you just completely missed the the mark. That's what you yeah. did. You 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 missed the mark entirely. This one, there's like this core of an idea there of like, all right, how do we make Contra 3D? We do this. Okay. <laughs> nope. You, you almost had it because when you really think about it, the the core of it, they almost had it, right? You've got the, like the Saturn version has the ability to stop and aim, whereas the PlayStation one only has strafe. Um, But strafe is weird. Strafe turns on and off instead of like you strafe while you hold this button. No, no. You tap this button and now you're strafing. Then you tap it again and turn strafing off. That's ridiculous. But like the core concept of making Contra three dimensional by making it kind of like the overhead segments from like super contra or something yeah there's there's a sound concept there and the fact that you can stack weapons and switch between a bunch of them and the different characters have different weapons similar to like something like contra hardcore there's 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 a nugget of a good idea there the problem was is that the very basic mechanics of this thing don't function the way they need to to make it fun and that was like they were so close because all the really, all you really need to do to make this game serviceable because right we're talking earlyish PS well, like this is a uh, it wasn't a big box PS one game like a, a tall box but it was right. relatively early during this generation like the transition of two D games to three D games was always somewhat difficult and all you had to do with this one you have to pull the camera back a bit so you can see what's going on more. You have to make the different angles that you can aim and, at. And also make it not swing wildly all over the fucking screen oh when you're moving. Oh my god, yeah. You definitely need to handle that. And you need to be able to control like the elevation at which you shoot or do some sort of auto-aiming. Because the problem you run into almost right away is you get to that wall. And like, okay, how do I shoot this thing The targets above my head? In Contra, I would just press diagonal and shoot there, but you can't do that in 3D. Right. So if you're going to make a 3D game, you need to be able to give me the ability to shoot with within like 3D spaces by doing some sort of lock-on or some way to manually guide the angle at which I'm shooting. But you have to jump and shoot it. So you're just like jumping and shooting this machine gun over and over again. Like, this is which so isn't, stupid. Which isn't fun. And what what was so instantly frustrating about that first wall because it's a callback to the first wall boss yeah they do that all the time they've that you fight a dozen times in contra games in every contra but what what i found so frustrating about this one was that it the the target that you needed to hit was not it was like three fifths of the way up the wall it wasn't at the peak of your jump it wasn't in the middle of your jump (laughs) it was somewhere in between those two places which meant that as you were jumping and shooting you kind of hit it every now and again but but not like you couldn't jump to shoot it you had to shoot while jumping and there's a big difference between those two things like, I'm not jumping to the apex of my jump and hitting the button and hitting this two or three times. I am hoping that with the rate of fire and the speed of the ascent and descent of this jump, that I will hit it at least once. And sometimes you don't. And it's... This game fucking sucks. It's so bad. If they would have made it, Chris, a twin-stick shooter, Ah, it would be a zero, like which would be better than what it is now. Like right now, it's like minus five stars. A <laughs> twin stick shooter would have made this a flat zero in my estimation, because the rest it's just not fun. None of the weapons feel any different. They don't it, in so far as they don't feel like they do any more damage. They sure Whereas, sounds different, which is. <sighs> I could not wait, could not wait to get any weapon other than the machine gun. Because you will hear it a lot, but like... it's really loud and really obnoxious. What's the coolest weapon in any Contra game? What's the the one you want? The tomato blaster. Yes. 100% you want the spread. Every time. 
every single time. You know what doesn't feel any better in this game than any other weapon? This fucking, fucking spread, spread gun. gun. It doesn't they matter. They don't even it look doesn't like matter. tomatoes anymore. It nothing in this game. No upgrade. There was no upgrade. There was no. There's the laser. That homing laser thing <sighs> is a slight improvement. That's in because you don't have to. You don't have to attempt to aim so much with the homing laser, but it's right. still obnoxious because it just kind of like it still flops sucks. all over the place. Yeah, it still yeah. sucks. It everything about this game sucks. Everything about this game. I, the motion sickness that I was starting to feel from trying to follow this fucking camera around, uh, the clicking on and off of the strafe, the the fucking prone position that you can sometimes go into to avoid edit. like there's just there's no creativity here. There's just no nothing. What it's, pisses me off oh about God, it it's is so that bad. It, it didn't. I I don't know why it is as bad as it is because like I said they weren't that far off from making a mediocre first attempt at 3D Contra considering sure. what was happening in video games at the time that this came out they weren't that far off right we're looking at what did I say this came out in 96 yeah like I mean making a 3D con this seems like someone at Konami was like make a 3D contra and they said okay and then when they got this far and they said fuck it ship it like <laughs> you, you didn't have to go that much further if they had gone just a little bit further they could have made this a half decent that you could look back on and be like okay I see how they this is how they tried to make contra 3D it didn't work but it almost did and it was vaguely fun to play and vaguely Contra feeling. They were almost there. And that's what I think pisses me off the most is that they didn't have to go much further. There were just some really basic things that I guess, I feel like this definitely came out pre DualShock. I don't when, know because I'm, I'm looking here. DualShock? So I'm looking here on the list of games that came out in 1996. Um, so you've got Quake for the PC, Super Mario 64. Duke Nukem 3D, Diablo, the first Resident Evil, Wave Race, Time Commando, Pilot Wings, Crash Bandicoot, Super Mario RPG, Twisted Metal 2. Like, and I know those are, I, I know we're mostly talking 2D games there. I mean, there is some 3D mixed this in was, there. But, but this was pre dual analog and dual uh and dual shock. Oh, so well, PlayStation's then, dual analog controller came out in April of ninety seven. So this game was in development way before that released, and, and it came out in November '96. So yeah, this was pre-analog stick. So I get like I get why the game controls the way that it does to an extent, but, but like still, you could still do better than this without an analog stick. You, you could. absolutely could have. Like if if your enemies had been at the apex of your jump. That's one thing, because that, that's one thing that the very first Contra gets right. You hit things at the apex of your jump as you're flipping through the air. You know, you, you shoot at a particular time, and it makes sense, and it feels good in the natural rhythm of the game. Um, there was a, there's Contra a distinct... feels like somebody played it and decided whether or not it was fun. This is just like, yeah, who playtested this and said, yeah, ship that? It, but I, I mean, knowing that it comes from the people that made Echo the Dolphin makes a lot of sense because Echo the Dolphin is another one of those games where a lot of people that are not me will tell you that it's just outside of being fun. It's just outside of being really good. I happen to disagree entirely. Um, but that sort of seems like the track record then for Appaloosa Entertainment. Well, the thing about Echo is that for all of its flaws, it still feels pretty good to move Echo around. Like, mm. the feeling of jumping out of the water and, like, darting around, like, that that's that's fine. Mechanically speaking, I don't have a problem with Echo. It's a lot of the structural problems that Echo has and the fact that the story is so completely out of this fucking <laughs> world. But, uh... I mean, I, I kind of like Echo, right? I, I don't dislike that game to, to the degree that you do. Um, I think it's utterly fascinating. I don't know if it is successful, but it is fascinating. Sure. Uh, 
but that's just it. Like from a functional level, it, it, it makes sense. The things that you can do in the, in, in that game and why you do them make sense. This one is just, I, I don't see it. I don't get it. It's not good. It's, it's not, not good. I, and I'm sorry we made us play it. Is, is, in your opinion, is this the worst game that we've played in for the show? Can you think of anything that stands out that is worse? I mean, we didn't play the CDI Zelda games for the show. That was the Petathon. Right. Um, I mean, that's kind of for the show. Zelda's Adventure is worse than this. Is it? Um, oh, God, yes. At least you when, you when you play Contra Legacy of War and you boot it up and you move... The screen moves, you know. Yeah, and that's Zelda's fair. adventure. Zelda's adventure barely fucking functions. Like that's fair. There, you you look at Zelda's adventure and like you can look at Faces of Evil and Wand of Gamelon and be like, "All right, you failed miserably, but I see what you were going for." <laughs> There's, I understand what you were trying to do, and what you were trying to do seems kind of cool. Yeah. Zelda's adventure is one of those things you look at and just like, what? I'm sorry. No, just <laughs> you. No, swinging a miss, guys. Swinging a miss in every single way is just just a no. Hard yeah. no, hard pass. No. Ugh. Yeah, I mean, I. Other than that, I can't think of anything. I hated every second of this. Yeah, it's, and this it's game, bad. this almost killed Contra as a franchise, right? No, this was a. Uh... Appaloosa got to do another Contra game after this. Did they? What did they do after this? They did see the Contra adventure. Oh, good God. Man, Let Contra just doesn't can... seem like it should be that hard to get right. Yeah, uh, they did the Contra adventure uh, in 98. So this was, what, 96, and then two years later they had another Contra game. Two years later, Konami was like, fuck it, guys, try again. Why not? You know, the it, it's weird too playing through it. The that I, I think it's the second or no, it's the third level. So like the second jungly kind of level felt uh-huh. like it was ripped off of like a PlayStation remake of the first Metal Gear. Huh. Like it looks very similar to in the original NES Metal Gear when you're lost in the woods. You know, mm-hmm, that, mm-hmm. that first section, yeah. it felt very similar like that to me. And I was like, hmm, I wonder if there was possibly a thing here. But then I got even more. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at the, uh, like, all right, so we start with Contra and Super Contra. Great games. Yeah. Got Operation C for Game Boy. Legitimately great game. Yeah. Contra the good. Alien Wars. Goddamn masterpiece. Yeah. Contra great. Force miserable piece of shit however it was not intended to be a contra game it was reskinned into a contra game right. for the u.s release so you get a pass on that one yeah contra hardcore i don't like it but i understand why people do so i like the okay. japanese version much better yeah it's it's it, there, there's there's good bones there yeah so then you got legacy of war and then you get contra contra adventure and then it goes silent until 2002 when you get Shattered Soldier, which the, was solid. The Ashley Wood looking one, right? Yeah, that was yeah. pretty cool looking. That was a pretty cool game. Uh, then you had Neo Contra, which I still haven't played that one. That uh, one and then is... Contra 4, which was amazing. Yeah, Contra 4 is great. I think Neo Contra is pretty good. I don't I've heard good things about it. Uh, I, don't, I, I just don't remember. And then nothing until 2019's... <laughs> Hardcore Uprising was 2011. And that was bad. I heard that was great, actually. Oh, was it? If you if you like, which is um, wait, which is the one I'm thinking of? Rogue Core. Rogue Core. 2011 yeah. had Hardcore Uprising. That was like the pseudo sequel to Contra Hardcore. So that's why right. I didn't play it because I didn't like Hardcore. Right. But I heard it's very very good for what it is. If you like that kind of a game. However, then 2019, eight years later, is when we got Rogue Core, which was just trash. And that again is trying to put Contra into a space that doesn't belong. Yeah. They, totally there are just, just some games yeah. that should not, th- that are just not 3D games. 
Contra could totally be 3D, though. That's what but pisses me off. I don't know that it can. Absolutely it can. The, like I said, this game in particular proves that I, all this is, it Contra, in Contra in 3D, all that really is, is like the top-down segments from older Contra games. They can work, especially now with lock-on. Like, just pull the camera out, run around, and instead of like having to, you can aim and shoot wherever you're shooting, except add, an, add a lock-on system. Like Metroid Prime, just click that and it automatically targets something that you shoot, then shoot, then shoot. It's not that complicated. Just make it... Uh, man, I don't know. I don't know that I, I agree. Play, I really don't. I play the crap out of that. Just, just because, like, thinking about... Because even the, the 3D Contras that we've gotten aren't necessarily what, um, what we think of, I think, when you say 3D gaming. Like, the camera is not behind the character. It's, you've got that top-down view. And here it's like a weird kind of angle that they that they pick. So I don't think like a straight up behind the character, like really platformer style necessarily yeah, would work. Um there's maybe an isometric perspective that could work in there. But it it's one of those things where it because it is so much more difficult to translate to 3D well, why bother? It doesn't need to. That is true. It doesn't need to. There's no reason to do it. Contra works so well because it's such an arcade-like experience. It is that wave after wave of enemy coming off the side of the screen, and that just doesn't really work in a 3D space where things are coming from all around you. Even in a twin-stick shooter, I can't think of many twin-stick shooter-type things where there is a level of verticality to it that is fun. See, I'm looking at a. a Am I wrong? Of, I'm on, looking on at a playthrough of Neo. Con Holy shit! I'm looking at a playthrough of Neo Contra, and I just got to a boss stage where you are running super fast on the blades of a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking amazing! Um, but this looks like what we're talking about of a not. 3D behind the character, but like kind of a sort of overhead thing. Yeah, this looks like it works. This looks like is what well, this is what we want. And this game looks like what Legacy of War should have been. I don't know. Maybe I haven't played Neo Contra. It's got lock on stuff going on and and shooting straight forward. It's got creepy ass hand monsters. That was yeah, one of the other things I really hated about this: the monster design. Like, everything just looked fucking awful. It wasn't yeah. like cool aliens. It was like fucking shitty robots. The yeah, whole some time, of the bosses not, were None big, of it creepy looked aliens. cool. But even then, they didn't look... Yeah, I agree. They even, even the boss characters that were creepy aliens didn't look cool. They were just kind of there. Very PS1, early polygon looking. It's not great. This is a yeah. bad game, and I'm tired of talking about it. So. <laughs> <laughs> this is a bad game. It's a piece of shit, and you're an asshole for making us play it. Thumbs down. <laughs> Two thumbs down. Dear God in heaven, I hate it. All right, it. Dan, give us the D. Oh, I'm going to put that D right in your mouth. Um, God, that, yeah, there's... I was going to do, like... I I was, like, planning a whole, like... How can I sell um, a baseball game for every single letter that I get to pick? <sighs> there's there's got to be a way to do it. I hated Contra Legacy of War so much that <laughs> all I can tell you is that we are playing Demon's Crest. Because uh... that game is so much better. I already started <laughs> playing Demon's Crest because I fucking hated this so much. <laughs> It's like I'm gonna. I'm just gonna get a head start on the game that I, that we're playing next month. Uh, so we were playing Demon's Crest uh, for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Nice. Go ahead and throw that in the Super Series Discord. Next game is Demon's Crest. You got yeah. you got a month to to fucking get through it. You should be able to. Nobody gave us any feedback for Contra Legacy of War. 
Uh, why would they? Why would they? I'm they glad knew. nobody played it. <laughs> People yeah, I gave really us feedback am. on Alicia Dragoon. We got absolutely nothing for Contra. Yeah, we got some comments for Batman. Yep. Nothing for Contra. You fuckers better bring it for Demon's Crest, though. Yes. I'll, I'll, I'll remind everybody, too. So. All right, that is it. That's all we've got time for. That's all we've got consciousness for. That is our yeah, show. I'm Join out. us next week. Uh, when we're going to do a new episode of the Stone Age Gamer Mailbag. We haven't done that in forever. We You're going to ask us questions. We're going to answer them on the show. Good questions, stupid questions. We're taking them all. It should be fun. And I think oh, Danny yeah. Uh, no, I, I thought you were going to keep <laughs> going. Yeah, no, it definitely should be. I'm not going to look at any of your questions. Or maybe I will. I don't know. Are we going to screen the questions? Can I don't know how to that? handle that. I feel like if there's too many questions, we'll have to screen them to an extent. But, I mean, maybe we'll have somebody do it for us. Maybe we'll Ooh, have somebody you go. get them all together for us. Either way, we are on but most for, social media yeah, platforms. Yeah, for real, we'll send us questions. Out. Ridiculous figure shit, goofy shit, stuff that you've always Serious wanted stuff. to know. Things, that, yeah. What do we smell like? Um, I don't know. Currently, I don't know how to describe it. Sandalwood. Um, I don't know, whatever my fucking uh, Duke Cannon soap is. We'll save, talk about save, that next week, though. Yeah, save it for the show. Duke Cannon's great. Got this little scrubby thing up a big bar of soap in. We are on most social media <laughs> platforms. It is sponsored by it. <laughs> if you want to get in touch with us. Oh my god, could we? Nice. They're expensive bars of soap, Chris. I'll take it. Sponsor the hell out of us. All it takes is a quick look at our show notes, and you'll see links to our social media accounts, as well as all manner of other fun stuff, like a link to our namesake, StoneAgeGamer.com, and more useful links than you can shake a bar of soap at. If you'd like to get early access to this show's <laughs> episodes, as well as a bevy of other shows on the Geekade Podcast Network, check out our Patreon, also linked to in the show notes. It helps keep this show running week after week, and all our patrons are loved and appreciated with soap. The show's <laughs> theme song, Soaped Roots. This isn't getting for this. <laughs> Crossed the line. It's not it funny did. anymore. It was Dude. never funny in the first place, but I'm tired. Uh, this uh, show's theme song, Squared Roots, was written by Banjo Guy Ali. You can learn all about his wonderful music and more by following the link to his YouTube channel, also in the show notes. And finally, as always, we'd like to thank our intrepid editor, Evan, for making the show listenable for all you folks. We'd like to thank all you folks for listening in the first place. That is it. On behalf of Dan and myself, keep washing your ass with soap. That's for all you better. Wash up, you stinky fuckers. Love you. <laughs> 